Uh, I usually introduce distinguished attendees. Uh, looking down the list here, I see Brittany Bendix, the assistant planning manager for the city and the woman who, at least for now, has oversight of this particular project. Uh, Elise Hempel, the executive director of PPSC. Uh, Chris Rebelo, the uh, senior advisory committee chair. Who else are we going to mention here? Some, oh, Ned Orrett from the Climate Action Commission. So it's a good group here this evening. Most of you have been to previous uh, Know Before You Grow sessions, so I won't bother repeating what the mission of Know Before You Grow is. I will just deal with a couple of logistical issues. Uh, if you hover, hover your cursor toward the bottom of the screen, you'll see a chat option. Uh, if you can type questions in there, we will look there first for questions after the presentation is complete. Uh, after we've exhausted that list, we will go back and ask if other people want to raise their hand. So, but if you can get it down on chat as we go, it makes sure that your thoughts are you know, put down in real time. The two speakers this evening are Scott Hunter and Jeff McComick, both of Vesta Pacific Development, both live in Napa, where they're currently finishing up a Register Square project not far from downtown Napa. And now they're looking to branch out into Petaluma. Although Jeff shared with me as we during the warm up here that he's been coming to Petaluma regularly to meet with friends and enjoys the town. So is presumably looking forward to doing a project here also. With that, I will turn it over to the two of them. Uh, they will speak for maybe half an hour and then we'll do the, uh, the questions. Gentlemen, the show's yours. Great. Thank you, Dave. Um, I will uh, start things off. One thing, I am a Sonomian. Um, uh, I live in the, in the city of Sonoma. Jeff's over in Napa, so, so I am a, almost a local. Um, as, as, uh, as Dave said, uh, we're with uh, uh, Vesta Pacific Development uh, that has done a lot of uh, residential development in Southern California, but about three years ago began to develop up here. And our first project is Register Square, which is on 2nd and 3rd Street over in Napa, uh, 51 residential units and, and two uh, uh, retail uh, offerings there. And then uh, Bartnall Landing, which is what we're calling our, our Petaluma project, uh, will be our, our second Northern California uh, development. And basically, Jeff and I handle the, uh, the entitlement and the, the whole uh, approval process. Uh, Jeff's most involved with city staff, and uh, I'm pretty much the point person on community outreach. Uh, we have been working with staff for pretty close to a year, and uh, we have actually had one, one entire uh, concept that we, uh, after vetting it a bit with staff, we decided to, to start all over again. Um, and when what you'll see here reflects the fact that, that we really want to develop something that meets the needs of the community. And so we've relied heavily on some, uh, some of the leading lights in the community, but also very much on, on staff to, to get to the point that we're, we're gonna show you tonight. Uh, so you'll know we've made application to the city uh, formally, and we're, we're uh, later this week, we'll be receiving our, our 30 day letter, which, which uh, uh, we're looking forward to. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, as you can see here, uh, our site is outlined in red and uh, the right here from this corner, that's, that's McMare and, and South Petaluma Boulevard. It's 0.8 miles to downtown. It's about 0.3 miles to the nearest market. Uh, so it's easy, certainly easy biking distance and, and not a bad walk at all. Uh, the, yellow, the blue lines that you see running along South Petaluma Boulevard and up McNair represent uh, the, the work that we'll, we will be doing offsite. Uh, it includes uh, curb and gutter, uh, a, uh, uh, a bike lane, but also will connect the, the sidewalk up by the bowling alley, the other end, uh, by the bowling alley and will run all the way down uh, past PPSC's current office. 
So uh, we'll have a continuous walkway there and a bike lane to go with it. Next slide, please. Uh, what I'm gonna do is basically go over the data points of the, uh, of the project, sort of highlighting uh, the various aspects and then uh, I'll turn it over to Jeff and Jeff will, will walk through the, the actual plans. So what we've got is a four acre site that was zoned R4 residential, uh, which allows for 18 units an acre, which would have made uh, 72 units. Uh, we are making use of a density bonus. And so we were able to increase the number of units up to 79. Um, and then those 79 units are in a variety of configurations. We've got 38 stack, 38 stack flats, 25 townhomes, uh, one duplex, one triplex, 11 single family residences, and uh, four ADUs. Next slide, please. Of the, uh, the 79 units, uh, 26 of them are deed restricted affordable, 13 being uh, deed restricted um, for low income at 80% of AMI and 13 deed restricted uh, for moderate income at 120% uh, percent of AMI. And then the, the four ADU units are re deed restricted for very low uh, rental. At today's, but it, it's, it's really important to point out that even though 26 are deed restricted affordable, um, based on pricing, really 46 are, are, um, uh, are, are in the affordable range or close to, well, 58% of the total units uh, are affordable. And at today's pricing, that 58 would be priced at, um, uh, 500,000 or less with, again, at today's pricing with the least expensive coming in in the high 200. So these are very affordable units. It's also important to point out that the affordable units aren't segmented off on a, in a, in a separate area. They are blended in with, with the stack flats and the, the townhomes in, in everywhere except on, this, on the uh, single family residences. Um, Petaluma's uh, code calls for three parking spaces uh, per housing unit, and we used our density bonus to reduce that uh, to just over two spaces uh, per unit. And so that means we've got 173 parking spaces, most of them in garages, 134, uh, 39 in garages, and 34 um, uh, for guest parking. And that, that allows for a lot more open space. In fact, the open space that we're providing is more than double what the city requires. Next slide, please. Um, we will be the first project, um, sometimes it's not fun to go first, but um, we'll be the first project to go through the approval process in Petaluma uh, under the vehicle miles traveled or, or VMP, VMT uh, statutes. And so it's, we're really a, a, a test case. And to be sure that it, it's, that's really an environmental statute. Um, it's designed to, to promote walkability, uh, increase density uh, and reduce, uh, reduce traffic. And, um, to be sure that we're, we're doing that right, we have, we have decided from the get-go that we're gonna do a focused EIR so that uh, not only will we have what we present, but we'll have a, an outside uh, consultant who will conduct the EIR um, and that will be a part of the package that we uh, present to the Planning Commission and, and City Council. But some of the things that you can do in order to lower your VMT score uh, from our area score is, as I've already mentioned, we've increased the density uh, from 18 up to just over 19 units per acre. Uh, we've increased the, the low income affordable units from six to 13. Uh, we're deed restricting the ADUs for very low uh, rental. Uh, we're providing uh, electric vehicle charging in all garages. Uh, we're providing a bike share system. We'll have 20 bikes um, that will be a 
uh, owned by the HOA and managed by the HOA, uh, available for residents use. Uh, and then we'll have the offsite uh, uh, improvements that I mentioned earlier, the bike lane, the curb gutter and, and sidewalks. And of course we've reduced, again, reduced the parking from three down to 2.19. And the last thing which uh, got left off this slide is there will be a bus stop um, uh, put at the corner of McNear and South Petaluma Boulevard. And hopefully uh, Petaluma Transit will follow suit and begin to send more, more buses down that way. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I don't have a, a separate slide for this, but it's, it's very important that we point out that, that one of the, the, the key factors to the way we develop projects is community outreach. And Know Before You Grow is, our, is our, our first opportunity to talk to a group. However, we have talked to some of the smaller organizations or the executive director of, of some of the other uh, organizations in town. Um, we hope to be able to come back to Know Before You Grow as we go through this process so that as, as things are, are fine tuned, we'll be able to report back to you uh, and, and get your input on, on what we're doing. Uh, we also uh, will continue to try to, to find other stakeholder groups uh, in town that, that we wanna be sure are informed about what we're doing. And lastly, uh, again, as we, as we get further down the way, we will start a series of community meetings um, where we'll mail people within a thousand uh, feet of, of our location and invite them to, uh, uh, to a meeting in, in hopes that, that over time, if we have three or four of these, that, uh, that everyone will be, will be well informed. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Jeff and he will run through the specifics on the plan beginning with what this beautiful picture is. Good evening and thank you. Uh, this is a, a shot, a rendering of the main access point into the project off McNear with a single family detached along this Western border and the a triplex and just the edge of the uh, multifamily product. As Scott indicated, the site is four acres and it's laid out with 79 units in four different product types. The first product, two product types are the stack flats and the townhomes. And that's these 11 buildings right here. And the stack flats are this 749 square feet to 939 square feet, single level flats, two, two bedroom, one bath, one car garage, and two bedroom, two bath, two car garage. And that's an eight plex here, an eight plex here, an eight plex here, and an eight plex here. The townhomes are in four plexes here and here. They are 1,524 square feet, three bedroom, three bath, three level units with two car garages. And then there's a built building here that has combination of three townhomes and two flats, it's a, it's a five flex. The site is accessed through two private roads with the main access coming off McNear and that was the rendering you just saw. And that private road will access another private road that is an extension of Lena Lane, which is the subdivision to the west. And the Lena Lane extension will run through the project to Petaluma Boulevard. At this point, the access onto Petaluma Boulevard is deemed to be emergency access only. That'll be a call by Public Works if they decide they wanted to have some sort of access out here, right in, right out only or something. The uh, flats and townhomes are accessed via this alleyway system as they are their garages are all rear loaded. That alleyway system will be pervious pavement the third product is a, the duplex and the triplex. And the duplex consists of a 1,555 two bedroom, two bath unit and a 1,850 three bedroom, two and a half bath unit. And the triplex it has two of the smaller units, I mean, two, one of the smaller units and two of the larger units. These are also where the ADU units are. They will be part of the purchase of one of the four of these units over here. 
And then the fourth product type is the single family detached along the western border. There's 11 of those. There's an 1,850 square foot, uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath, and a 2,040 square foot, uh, three, four bedroom, three bath. And those single family detached act as a transition from the existing single family detached on Nadine Lane right here. And they are two story, whereas this product over here is two and three story as well as this. This is just a photos of existing residential across Petaluma Boulevard to the east. And that is the VFW building that you can barely see behind the shrubbery. This is a conceptual rendering looking for, uh, to the corner of Petaluma Boulevard and McNear of the stack flats and townhome product along Petaluma Boulevard and, and McNear. The, the VFW would be right here. This is a conceptual landscape plan. Uh, as you can see, there's, we will be providing a great deal of uh, planting and including trees. We were able to save 10 trees despite the high density nature of the product. We are also relocating 15 trees. We moved the sidewalk along McNear in order to save some of the trees. That's why the sidewalk dips in and out like this. Uh, and then due to the road diet on Petaluma Boulevard, there's at least 50 feet separation for most of Petaluma Boulevard from the buildings out to the curb of Petaluma, providing a whole great deal of landscape potential out there. There are two major or, or, or two significant open space areas, common open space areas in the product. The main one right here is the small park that has two passive spots, a little grove. This is proposed as a gazebo, and this area is proposed as a a uh, small tot lot park. The second open major open space area is this small park running from Petaluma Boulevard into the project, providing uh, pedestrian and bicycle access into the project, into the middle of the project. This is also where the bike share facility will be, which is right there where the 20 bikes will be. That may or may not be solar powered electric bikes. That's something we've yet to determine. There are four access points along Petaluma Boulevard for pedestrian access and bike access. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And then three along McNear apps providing pedestrian and bicycle access to the public right-of-ways from multiple points within the project. This is a rendering of the sections along Petaluma Boulevard and McNear, showing the relationship to the existing residential to the south along Petaluma Boulevard and the VFW building uh, to the north on Petaluma Boulevard. And these are the three proposed buildings with the one proposed, one of the proposed buildings along McNear. This is the McNear section with Petaluma Boulevard the two proposed buildings, the single family detached, and then over here is the existing residence along Lena Lane, uh, Nadine Lane at McNear. This is a blow up of the stacked, two of the three stacked flat buildings. This building 300 is the townhome buildings, excuse me, is the uh, stacked flat buildings, the eight plex. Uh, each unit has a porch on the front or a deck on the front that faces out to either the street, the common, common open space area, or uh, the internal private streets. And then building 100 is the fourplex townhome buildings. Building 200 is not shown here. Uh, all of the buildings have porches on the fronts along here, along here, along here that interface with either the walkways along here, are the open space along here, or the open space along here, or the pri private street. These are the uh, duplex and triplex units. They are craftsman architecture. They are, as I said, this one, the duplex is 1500 square feet and 1850 square feet. They are designed to 
look as much as possible for duplex and triplex units as one larger single family detached house as opposed to uh, multi, multi units. And then the single family detaches two product types, again, craftsman style, porches along the front uh, in order to interface with the private street. And then and the, these units as well as the duplex and triplex units will also have private rear space backyards. Each unit has private open space, private usable open space and either a patio, a deck, are rear space and some have mul some some have multiple spaces and then of course there's the the larger two larger common space areas and that's about it and we have uh, uh, my name number and email is at the bottom so uh, again if there are any questions after this uh, anyone is welcome to call me or email me with uh, with questions. Okay, the floor is now open for questions. I don't see anything in the chat list. So if you want to raise your hand using the reaction buttons at the bottom, excuse me, there are the, if you click on the participants list, you'll see the opportunity to, um, raise your hand, hit the hit the button in the lower right, and I will call on you in the order your hands are raised. And unless somebody raised their hand very quickly, I'm going to start asking questions so myself. In the uh, in the chat, Marion Weinreb says, asks, what are you defining as low, low income? Is it the HUD definition? And I saw the medium low income, but I didn't see the low, low income number as percent of AMI. 60 percent 60 okay so that, that's that's the four adu units for for rent right okay yep. so ami is about 80k a year i think yeah the the document that i've saw for 2019 i haven't seen 2020 but it wasn't available it basically puts rent around 1100 dollars for a unit Okay. Based on the sixty percent AMI. Cool. And doesn't AMI vary depending on household size? Yes, it does. It does vary depending on bedroom count and household size. But that's it. Those are the ADUs are one bedroom, so it's a two-person household. That's true. Okay. I have a question, if I may. Go ahead, Mr. Ross. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was late. I was trying to get this thing to work. Um, I live at, uh, on Nadine Lane, 1225, and back up to this um, development. Um, and I'm curious to know, um, since I got here late, um, what is the, what is the um, easement, if you will, between our houses along Nadine and what appear to be single family units um, on the south side of the, the lot? Yes, the, well, it's not an easement, but the, 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 the setback ranges from, I believe, uh, 10 to 15 feet from the PL, back PL. Okay. And the, uh, uh, our, our site is anywhere from two to two to four feet lower uh, than, uh, than the grade at uh, off your street. Right, right. Um... So are those two story um, units yes. on the south side? Yes. So they'll be able to look right down into my backyard. Great. Um, not happy about that. Where are the entrances into this complex? And I hope it's not on Lena, because Lena Lane and Nadine are not big enough for this much traffic. The, the the main interest points is off, is off McNear, right? McNear. I see. There will be potentially an access point off Petaluma Boulevard. And is it is is does it dead end at um, where where Lena Lane currently dead ends? That's is it going to be? Are you doing a through street onto Lena? Is my question. It is currently proposed as a through street. 
That's a bad idea. This is two streets here, a small neighborhood with lots of kids that play outside. Um, the streets just aren't wide enough on Lena and Nadine. It's not like uh, Mission Drive. So um, I think that needs to be rethought personally. I mean, I realize you've got to have more than one exit, but certainly one exit can go out to Petaluma Boulevard and not have all this traffic coming into our neighborhood, which is basically two streets and however many houses we have here. So that's my opinion. Um, I mean, I was born in this town 73 years ago. So I actually played on this land when I was a child. I grew up over in, on, on Mountain View Avenue. So I have a lot of history here. Though I did live in Santa Rosa for 35 years, but you'll forgive me for that. Okay. Um, and I, I came back to Petaluma um, when I was getting to retire from Sonoma State. Um, are there um, like playground um, facilities for the kids that might be living here? Yes, there's a tot, tot lot right right there. And then there's these oak, passive open spaces right here as well. And But that that is proposed as a, a play facility for, for kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you, when I finally got on, you were talking about trees. We have a lot of trees, and I have a big oak tree that's a few feet from my back fence that I think is, I'm not sure where the, the your property line is and where our property line is, but um, are you retaining these, these old um, oak trees? There are four or five trees along this with the western edge that are being being saved yes but not all of them um well one of them hangs over my whole backyard so obviously i'm i and so did my neighbor going toward mcnear has one as well there's several houses here that have beautiful trees just on the other side of our fence and to strip all of that down and lose our beautiful view is not going to be uh, it's not going to be um, certainly not going to be welcomed by me. Well, ten uh, ten of the trees will will be saved where they are. Uh, another uh, uh, fifteen uh, will be uh, uh, transplanted, and those are primarily oak and a couple of plane trees. And then we're, we're planting another 147 trees in 36 inch, uh, um, 36 inch or larger um, containers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, obviously I'm gonna to have to come up, probably everyone along Nadine facing this is gonna to have to figure out what they're going to do to have some sense of privacy. That's why I'm concerned about how close these houses are to us, because they're going to just, I mean, I'm in a two-story house too. I don't particularly want to look down into their, into their backyard either. Um, well, you know, what, we would, what we would be happy to do is uh, if, if you and your neighbors would like to walk the site with us, uh, plans in hand, we would love to set up an appointment for you to do that. That would be great. And my, my number, uh, phone number and email uh, is on the last slide. And uh, I, I'd, I'd be happy to set something up. How do you move these slides around? You I, don't, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, <laughs> well, okay then, <laughs> be that way. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, well, the other thing I was gonna ask is, are these condominiums yes. or apartments? I mean, I realize they're gonna be investors that buy up a bunch and then turn around and rent them. And obviously for those of us here in this neighborhood where our houses are now in the million dollar range, we have concerns about our property values. And um, I hate the idea of sounding like a, a, a NIMBY, but I just, I, I, wanna, I wanna have as much information as I can. Um, you know, I put a lot of money into this house and um, 
I don't want to see my values go down if this turns into a something undesirable. Let me put it that way. If I can interrupt you for a minute, for a moment, Mr. Ross, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, okay. I can get you a link in a couple of days and you can share it with your neighbors as a way to continue the conversation also. Okay. Okay. And then I'm, I've also, I've got a number of questions starting to pile up here, if I could. Um, are, are you through, Mr. Ross, for the moment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Dwayne Bellinger was the first one to raise his hand. So Dwayne, the floor um, is yours. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I rather like the, the looks of what you're doing, but um, I appreciate your uh, paying attention to the neighbors also. My question, I have two questions. The simple one is, what elevation is this? And that's the uh, same question I ask all developers uh, concerning uh, global warming and sea level rise. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, a, a single uh, a statement of numbers is all I need on that one. And the, the other question is, can you show us the uh, access routes to whatever schools, both uh, K-6 and uh, uh, junior high and high school. What, what is the uh, direction on, on a map that shows the distance and the path that uh, children would use to get to school? Assuming um, sometime next year, we all get the children back to school again. Well, the middle school that, or the elementary school that services this project is, is to the west and a little bit to the south, well within walking distance. The mm -hmm. Middle school and high school are, are on the northwest side of town and you know, maybe accessible via bicycle, but a little bit farther than one would probably walk to school. So the parents will be driving them? Most likely carpooling or driving. Well, I think, I think depending on um, number of riders, uh, Petaluma Transit would certainly be eager to look at reinstituting the old uh, Route 5 that connected specifically to the, from this area to the middle school and the high school. And uh, are the parks also, uh, I realize you have uh, inter interior um, play, play, play areas, but is there, is there any major parks for the kids to go to? Yes, there's a park to the north that is within walking distance. Uh, it's north and west of Petaluma Boulevard. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but there is there is a park. And then of course there's the internal areas. Thank you very much. Okay. Looking at the list of chat questions, uh, Chris Rebelo, will any of the units have zero step entrances? ADU accessible units is, is that? I think that's what she means by that. Yes. Yes, there will be. I, I don't know the exact count, but there will be accessible units uh, provided with accessible handicap accessible parking within a, and with an accessible route to those units. Yeah, but there will be. Okay. Uh, Ryan Floyd asks, can you be more specific what trees are being saved? There's a series of trees along this edge. Any, any tree that's right up near the PL on the west, west side. There's a tree right here where we're moving the uh, sidewalk, a tree right here where the sidewalk comes around. And then there's several trees here that will be saved. And then there's some trees on this edge that will be saved. Okay. And then from Noel McDonald, apologize if I missed it, but what is the proposed timeline? The, uh, the EIR will take um, anywhere from uh, 60 to 120 days. Um, and that won't start uh, until uh, until after the the city does an RFP to hire the consultant, uh, so we're we're probably looking at a year before uh, uh, any construction would begin or less. Okay. Anyone else want to raise their hand? Then then I will jump in with a question about the curb uh, gutter sidewalk along Petaluma Boulevard. 
my understanding is that um, that work was already going to be included in the road diet uh, for which the city has funding. Uh, if they've managed to hand it off to you instead, does that mean they're going to do something else uh, within the road diet to, to um, you know, enhance it? Or if your project goes away, does that mean that curb sidewalk will not happen? Well, we were unaware that that was funded, so that you're that you're giving us some news. <laughs> um, it was just it was part of our proposal, so I I am not sure. You know, and, I'll and jump I, in from the city. There you um, go, Brittany. So we we're, we're in the process of reviewing the project, and that's definitely a comment that we're discussing internally, and we'll need to figure out the timing on uh, because it's really a question of which one moves forward first. So we'll have to look really closely at the details of when things are moving along, but it's it's not lost on us, and it's something that we're we're talking about. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then Scott Bartna is an all, odd name. Do you want to tell us how it came to be? Oh sure. Um, the Vartna family has has owned the the pro the the property for many many years, and. Uh, part of our uh, purchase agreement was that we would call it Vartnall Landing. And I realize we're not on the river, but uh, there is a nautical theme to the family. Captain Vartnall, uh, who, who died uh, several years ago, in it, well into his 90s, was born in Russia and uh, became a sailor at the age of 16, traveled all over the world, uh, and then settled in, in Petaluma and was uh, the skipper of a garbage scow that was about 25, um, 25 miles out of the Golden Gate. Uh, this was in uh, uh, about December 20th of 1941, so it was right after Pearl Harbor. And he saw a troop ship um, that was heading out and just out of the corner of his eye, he saw what he thought was a periscope. And uh, so he, as, as the story that, that uh, was sent to us from, from the newspaper, uh, he made that scow move like it had never moved before. And he rammed the, the sub. And um, uh, he felt that he had hit it and sunk it. And, um, and in fact, that was confirmed sometime after when the uh, um, uh, when the wreckage uh, was was found, so uh, so that is that's why we call it Vartnall Landing, and and uh, as sort of an honor of of the good captain. Thank you. I see that. Hey, do hey, can we add a widow's walk if we're going to call this a landing? We we need a widow's walk for the uh, for the captain. <laughs> One of the buildings. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Seeing and hearing none, I apparently our evening is complete. Thank you for joining us. Uh, again, this has been recorded. It will be up online soon. I will get the link out to everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Our next uh, event will be Wednesday, November 11. I'm talking with a couple of different folks about who will be the presenter that evening. I will advise you of that as soon as possible also. Will the, Thank you. Will, will you be up, um, um, posting these images? Because I missed the, uh, the renderings and all of that. Um, the, uh, the, the video will certainly have the images in them. Oh, okay, you're, you're, you're I, posting the entire video. Got yeah, it. Yeah, we've recorded the entire thing, so. Sure. Um, sure. As soon as every all of the various cloud services process that, we'll have it available. Great. And and Mr. Ross, please do uh, after you take a look at the at the uh, the video, my number and emails at the yeah. end. Uh, yeah. Please do give me a call. Yeah, because there's okay. several neighbors here that um, have been chatting. Of course. When I, got the, when I got the notice of this meeting, so that we can, uh, you know, provide our input as citizens and neighbors. Perfect. So, Okay. We appreciate that. Much. And if anyone here who is not on the Know Before You Grow email list, but would like to get the link to the uh, recording, you would need to email me so I'm aware of that. 
And my email address is DaveAlden53 at Comcast.net. Okay. Okay, I think our evening is complete. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And I will close out the uh, meeting. Good night. Good night.